The final note is swallowed up by a hall. After a brief pause, one clap turns into a thunderous applause. Usually, her. That was amazing. Yeah, you weren't pretty. You weren't bad, much bad. You, you weren't bad yourself. I look into a mesmerising set of eyes. We both face up to the audience and bow deeply. Adoration rains down and upon us again. I just ran the applause sound just keeps playing on loop. Mm. Anyway, there's something I want to talk to you about. A tone and low voice meant only for her ears. I'm sure she heard me, pause on my briefly mars her features. But I can't repeat her again, the nuance will be lost. Raise my hand to my, my adoring public, I look out to the lights like a face of a moon peeking from behind red clouds and bow again. So she finally has a resolve to say it, does she? This is just like back then, I think. Standing beneath Christ on the cross. Someone did here so that Ringo Sasaki could confess to me. However, the situation is strikingly similar, but I'm in the opposite position. I'm the one who's called her here, and I'm the one who's going to confess. I whisper my love to Nene Kamikado. When I think of the words I'm about to say, it feels almost baffling and real. I was doing my best to keep these feelings hidden. I thought it was just fine to just be friends, keeping her as my closest friend, the one person to whom I could be open, one person to whom I could open my heart. But they, they changed me. The young girl who admitted her feelings for me despite knowing they wouldn't be reciprocated. Ringo Sasaki, who openly confessed her love to me. Those girls gave me the push I needed. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Even I recognise that line. This time a quote that comes to mind is from Forrest Gump rather than Amelie. Because while Amelie's words gave me resolve, I offer no comfort when I think of her. A pious, faithful Christian. Startled by the sound of a heavy chapel door opening, I cower. Even in the darkness, I'm captivated by her hair like a golden wheat, her porcelain skin and her tender gaze. No. No, eh? As she approaches, I see in her eyes where as her eyes are wary, although she's already had sense, some sense of what's about to take place here. That look dampens my resolve. What are we doing here so late at night, usually, huh? I have to tell her, no passing it off as wanting to look at the stars this time. I wanted to toast our success with court contests privately, somewhere where we wouldn't be interrupted. A toast? Where's the wine? She's being silly, maybe because we're standing in front of an image of Christ himself. That can tell even without looking her in the eye, but she's forcing it. We brought back memories of the past. Yes. We often sang together when we were younger. Rainbow Magic is a special song to me. It reminds me of my mother. My best friend's face can talk bitterly. She knows what I went through with my mother's death. She looks at me with pain and sadness written across her face and I thank her. Thanks? For what? For giving me confidence before we went on stage. You shook my hand just like back then. The day we first got to know one another, I haven't forgotten. On a school trip, I haven't forgotten it either. Breaking right, smiles makes my chest ache, but I force myself to smile back. We were still kids back then. What's going on with you? Seems to be stuck in the past here today. We tend to reminisce about the past when we're less unsatisfied with our present. No, eh? You saved me. I was no one before I met you. I had no sense of who I was. That's not... 
You must have heard it too, that's why you offered your hand to me. Maybe it's just an act of kindness on your part, but... That was a moment of a splash of colour, but brightened in my monochrome world for the very first time. It's like I'm delirious with fever, and emotions boil within me. Steam up to my throat, and spill it up to my lips in an unstoppable stream of words. When we first played together, when we always got told off for sneaking around slacking. When you first invited me to your house. Those moments were all special to me. The days I spent with you were special to me too. I cut her off telling her she's wrong. My version of special isn't quite the same as hers. Her wise right way was I take her hand in mine which is trembling so violently it's almost funny. When we first met I was a little girl with braids and freckles. And I've loved you ever since then. At last. I feel like I'm speaking the truth for my first time in my life. At first, her eyes widen and she blinks it's like she can't believe what she's hearing then. She looks up at the image of Christ behind me and her eyes darken. You see her? I can tell from her tone of voice that she's a sinking ship. Like a pessimistic captain just waiting for a ship to go down. Neri! Neri! Don't. Anticipating my next desperate move, she, uh, she turns her face away. I see. So that's your answer. My heart feels like it's being scraped down my chest with a butter knife. The agony of rejection builds to desperation. Larry, I... Leaning in, I try to capture her lips again. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but... To be honest, she deserved that. She can't bring herself to finish a sentence. Explained to me from the way she looks up at the image of Christ in a stained glass window, she leaves. As devout a Christian, no one in Ricardo could not fall in love with anyone. I knew. I knew that all along. I knew that her faith wouldn't allow her to accept me. And yet, my heart would have torn itself apart if it didn't confess. It's no exaggeration to say that my feelings for her could no longer be contained, but... What I feel now is a regret so powerful it's crushing my chest and making it hard for me to breathe. If only I told her and told her anything, everything would continue on as it was. Whenever you're in trouble, click your heels together three times. Words from a wonderful wizard of Oz. They floated through my mind during a court contest as I journeyed back into the past. I'd want those silver slippers. The ones that transport me to my mother's side in an instant, no matter how far away you moved. In that book, which I'd read together with, with Neri, she took those slippers and... At some point, I was crouched down on the ground, now I raised my head at the sound of footsteps. For a moment, I thought that Neri had come back to me and was my frozen heart. Ringo can. She looks down at me with most pained expression and hits me when I'm completely and utterly alone. There's no safe harbour for me here anymore. Look into my eyes, she takes a breath. Ringo is such a sweetheart. She pulls me into her arms, pressing her body against mine. She caresses my cheek with my head like she's comforting her own child. While her hand is too tiny to remind me of my mother, I can feel the same intent to console me. It's fine. 
You don't need to. I won't ever reject you. Those were words. Those were words my hollow worthless self always wanted to hear. Use Ruhei Yatsiro, I. I accept you. Those words are like music to my ears, a balm from my bruised heart. And I realise the yearning I've kept inside all these years of gun fading away into the dark, and the silence without a goodbye. There's a children's story called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Dorothy and her companions scurry towards the Emerald City to meet the wizard. The scarecrow to ask for a brain, the cowardly lion to ask for courage, and the tin woodman to ask for a heart. And Dorothy to find her way home to Kansas. As a group makes their way along the yellow brick road to the city, they encounter various obstacles. A deep chasm that blocks their way, an attack by a beast with a body of a bear and the head of a tiger. The poor scarecrow is left behind as they cross a huge river. The cowardly lion is sent into a deep steep by the scent of deadly poppies. But with all their intelli the intelligence and bravery, they are able to overcome these challenges with mercy in their hearts. When finally they arrive at the Emerald City, we are at last granted with our audience with a wizard. The wizard, who will only meet with one person each day, appears to Dorothy as a huge floating head. To a scarecrow, he is a beautiful woman. To a tin woodman, a terrifying beast. And to a cowardly lion, he appears as a burning ball of fire. In exchange for granting my wishes, the wizard orders them to kill the wicked witch for West. Rather than bulking at his outrageous demand, I was instead filled with envy and sadness for the wizard. He could transform into anything he wished. Though if he had no true form, he could never truly know himself. The story that begins now is that of a stupid girl who didn't even know her own heart. Chapter 5 The Wizard of the Emerald City A bit of coffee prickles my tongue as I think of my best friend. The girl who confessed her love to me. Yuzu Hayatsuro had laid bare her previously concealed feelings to me, the imploring gaze that took me back to when we first met. And then, upon reading my reaction, her eyes. As I place her cup down on my desk with a sigh, my gaze falls on my book beside it. The wonderful wizard of Oz. The book was obsessed over as children. I'm at a fateful school trip. It wasn't out of kindness to become friends with her. Even as a child, it was undoubtedly self interest that spurred me to make friends with a girl who was always on her own. Because I had to be a good, well mannered girl. It's not that my myself was motivated me to be good. I simply did all the usual good deeds that normal people do. The classmate came dashing over to me, saying if I'd forgotten my textbook, I'd lend him mine. If I saw trash on the floor, I'd pick it up. The little things that anyone would do. But I was raised up and praised for those perfectly natural acts. Being a good girl wasn't something I wanted for myself. It was expected by those around me. 
It's probably related to my appearance. I was aware I looked gentle and approachable. Maybe be arrogant to think to say about myself, but I doubt people could even begin to look to imagine as someone as angelic looking as me doing anything immoral. No, the fact it was my father. Of course, any child of such a devout, God-fearing man could only ever possess the most exemplary conduct. So I don't recall being particularly kind to that girl on a school trip crying over a scraped knee. I simply did what was expected. The kind of wrote good deed what my father would have done. And yet, the girl was so grateful for my unremarkable treatment. I thought to myself that here again was someone who had mistaken me for a better person than I really was because of my looks. Because our house was close by, we started walking to school together. It was so cute, the way she trailed along behind me like a duckling. The school trip was the start of it. No, that's not true. One day we got on board of talking with my friends and noticed she was reading my favourite book, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and I struck up a conversation with her. From that day forth, I started talking to her only on the way back there, but also at school. Once we got to talking, I realised she was a walking bookshelf full of knowledge. Chatting with her was fun. We soon became friends. As I got to know one another better, I learned of a complicated home situation. And it made sense to me why she'd be so enamoured with me. I was special to her. What a horrible person I am. Seeing how my friend depended on me, I decided to test just how far she would go for me. So I was tired of things like seeing whenever I could get her to give him a dessert at lunch or getting her to buy matching stationery. Soon it escalated to requesting she take the same class as me. Till eventually, I made a promise that I would be her one and only friend. Usually her would do whatever I asked of her. I felt powerful. Then, I decided to push it even further into the most sacred of areas. I tested her friendship to her limits to see just how far I could control her. I made Yuzua Yatsuro get baptised like I had been. I made her choose to live as a Christian except it was no choice about it. I had, I had coerced her with our friendship with prize. So it wasn't right for me back then. Ever since I was little, it had been hammered into me by my father what it was to be holy, what faith meant. In my youthful curiosity and lust for conquest, I violated my own faith and desecrated her too. The now lukewarm coffee is like bitter mud sliding down my throat. Even though she actually hated coffee. She can drink it now after so long forcing herself to do it for me. Just in a way I changed her. The bitter taste takes me back to the time my, my conceited heart was doused with cold water. The time when her mother, who had been hospitalised in a distant infirmary, was permitted home for a brief spell. I want my mum to meet my best friend. I thought she accepted an invitation and arrived at her house with a bouquet, bou a bouquet in hand. She took me by the arm in a high ceiling house, leading to a room at the back. A mostly bare room. <laughs> You must be Nerine Kamikado. I've heard a lot about you from Yuzuha. She was gone to a sickness, yet there was nothing scary about her. She greeted me with a smile. I heard you are good friends with my, with my Yuzuha. Thank you. With shameless humility, I had spoken of mine and Yuzuha's friendship, and the mother nodded along with a pleased smile. I'll go get her some drinks. So I watched you with her leave the room, realised I was still holding a bouquet of flowers and looked around the room for a vase. Then... <laughs> so, Nerine san As soon as you with her left the room, the smile disappeared from her mum's face as she stared at me with a terribly morose look on her face. You don't really think of you with her as your friend, do you? I felt all the blood drained from my face and were pouring my soles on my feet. It was the first time anyone had ever seen from my fake goody two shoes act. The shark rendered me speechless. I, I watched as a woman in bed leaned forward. I don't care if it's a lie, but please, please. With a breath across my face, a voice sounded like it was coming from the depths of a well. She begged me. 
promised my usually huh Unable to bear those words, I shake my head to rid of it of memory. Having my arms around my trembling body, I stare out of the darkness behind the window. You don't really think of you as your friend, do you? I don't care if it's a lie, but please, please, promise my user, huh? The wind rustling a branch of a cherry tree sounds like a voice calling to me from the bottom of a well. Filled with my repentance for my former self. I whisper user his name. We aren't words a sinner like me can give her. My whispered words are carried away by the wind as I slowly close my eyes and make a sign of a cross over my breast. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Join me next time for some more. Bye bye. You are